The summer sky is really nostalgic for me. I remember when I was a kid going out with my first telescope trying to hunt down some of the brightest stars and deep sky objects that are up there. I also remember how frustrating it could be to not be able to find those things that I really wanted to go out to see. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through some of the best objects in the summer night sky that you can go out to see or image. Regardless of the equipment that you may have or may not have, there'll be something on this list if you're into astrophotography, if you own a telescope, just have a pair of binoculars, or want to go out for some casual observing with the naked eye. If you enjoy this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. But most importantly, let me know what you're going out to see an image in the comment section below. Now let's go outside right around sunset to set up our equipment to get ready for the night of observing and imaging that we have ahead. It's about an hour and a half after sunset, and I'm outside on a warm, muggy summer night where conditions aren't exactly perfect, but it's about as good as it gets for me in the summer months for observing and imaging. Now, it's important to remember for the targets that we're going to be looking at tonight that most of them are faint deep sky objects. So getting away from light pollution and making sure the moon's out of the way is going to help a lot for your observing or imaging. To help show you where these objects are located, I'm going to be using an app called Sky Safari. And I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below of another video that I made walking through the impressive features of this app. Now let's begin by looking up and finding the constellation Hercules. It's in this region of space that we find one of the most impressive globular clusters in the summer sky, M13, the Great Hercules Cluster. Begin studying it at low magnifications as its hundreds of thousands of stars slowly begin to reveal themselves to you. See how far you can push your telescope's magnification limit while still being able to sharply reveal the dense star field at its core. Here's one of my favorite shots taken of this globular cluster with my Canon SL2 250mm zoom lens and the Skyguider Pro tracking mount, showing off our first target of the summer night sky. Let's move from Hercules to the constellation Lyra which is actually my favorite portion of space during the summer months. It's in this region that you're going to find three distinctly different objects that are going to tell a story of how varied the objects can be that we observe and image in the night sky. Let's begin with one of the brightest stars that we have up there, Vega, with its beautiful blue tone popping right out of the background of space. After you've found Vega, let's move on to our second target in Lyra, the Double Double. What appears as one star to the naked eye under most conditions will be split into two stars with binoculars and four stars at high magnifications if your telescope and sky conditions can handle it. This is a fun one to show off the capabilities of your telescope and is actually a pretty good test of how high you can push your magnification and how steady the skies are for the night out that you're observing. On most good, clear, and steady nights, I can push my 8-inch Dobsonian telescope up to about 200 times magnification and split the double-double down to the four stars that you can hopefully go out and see yourself. Let me know how many you can spot in the comment section below. Our tour of Lyra continues with one of the most unique objects in the night sky, the remnants of a star that blew away its outer gas layers, leaving a white dwarf star at its center, and it's called the Ring Nebula. The best views through my telescope are around 100 times magnification, but on nights with a steady atmosphere, 
I can get some remarkable views of the outer edges and interior of this distant circular cloud floating in space at around 200 times magnification. As we move away from the constellation Lyra, we come across a target that in my experience is primarily going to be one for those of you doing astrophotography. I've never seen it visually, but I've been able to take some really nice images of it using long exposure, astrophotography, and my DSLR camera. Right near the star Deneb is where you will find the North America Nebula. I've never viewed this object visually, but shooting it with a CLS light pollution filter and my Samyang 135mm lens brought out the beautiful faint details of this emission nebula that covers a part of the sky larger than four full moons. Don't forget about framing it to catch the Pelican Nebula as well when you're out taking images of this target. Staying in Cygnus, let's move over to the Veil Nebula. The Veil Nebula reveals the ghostly remnants of a star that went supernova, and it is a sight to see, particularly with larger telescopes and dark skies. To help out with this target, try using a light pollution filter when observing it. I found good success with an O3 filter on this specific target. In terms of astrophotography, using a CLS light pollution filter, I was able to capture over three hours worth of data of the Veil Nebula, making it one of my longest exposures of any part of the night sky I've ever taken. And I was thrilled with the end result after using Deep Sky Stacker and Pix in Sight for post-processing. Let's move away from these two fairly dim objects to one that you're going to be able to go out and see with a nice pair of binoculars, and that's the Dumbbell Nebula. It's on my list of objects to image this summer, and please follow me over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy to see this and all my other astrophotography images taken throughout the year. Another fun binocular target is a cluster of stars aptly named the Coat Hanger, because, well, it kind of looks like a coat hanger. Our final region of space for the summer sky has you looking directly into the core of our own galaxy in what we call the Milky Way. It's easy to get lost in this region of space and I would really encourage you to take your time exploring this part of space from the darkest skies that you're able to get to. Using at first the naked eye and then a pair of binoculars and finally if you have it a telescope. While you're scanning the Milky Way Stop by and take a look at M11, the Wild Duck Cluster. This is one of the most impressive open clusters in the night sky, almost appearing as a globular cluster due to its density. Move your way down the Milky Way and look for the Eagle Nebula, M16, and the Omega Nebula, M17. Just below that is the Sagittarius Star Cloud, which was so dense that I actually had to go to a darker sky just to verify that I had seen it because I couldn't tell if it was a blur of light or a blur of light pollution that I was seeing from my own backyard. Next, we have the Trifid Nebula. At roughly the size of a full moon, this can be a breathtaking view through binoculars and a telescope under dark skies. Just below Trifid, we have a star-forming region of space known as the Lagoon Nebula. While best viewed with binoculars or a telescope, it can be viewed with the naked eye under good conditions and almost no light pollution. Finally, work your way down the Milky Way to M6, the Butterfly Cluster, and M7, Ptolemy's Cluster. My best experience out observing the Milky Way was about 30 minutes from my house under dark skies with no distractions. I was able to just slowly move through the density and beauty of the center of our galaxy using a pair of binoculars and my telescope. Those are just some of the incredible objects in our sky that you can get out to see this summer. 
Please let me know in the comments section below what you're able to get out and see an image and anything that I left off of this list that you'd like to share with others. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.